Okay, thank you. Okay, so, um, all right, so let's uh, go back to <clears throat> where we stopped. Um, let me actually um, also go back a little bit to Teichmuller space, right? I, I spoke about Teichmuller space, right? Um, and so let me, uh, let me remind you what it was. Um, let's say Teich of X, right? This was the set of all complex structures on X module of the equivalence relation that I called tilde zero, which meant that, which was saying that two complex structures were equivalent if one was the pullback of the other via a diffeomorphism, which was isotopic to the identity, right? Okay. And then we had a complex X, right? Which was the set of all complex structures just modular diffeomorphism. So we don't ask anymore that they are um, isotopic necessary to the identity. And we, we said that this was, sorry, this was the quotient of Teich by uh, the action of the group of components of the uh, group of diffeomorphisms of X, right? And in between here, we have our moduli of marked uh, hyperkähler manifolds, M gamma. Okay, so um, so these 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 two this M gamma. What can happen is that sometimes the Teichmuller space has got actually infinitely many components. It could have finitely many components, but it could have infinitely many components. Um, but the M gamma usually, I mean, has finitely many components, and then the comp, uh, you know. Uh, often people hope that the comp actually has that only one component, but that's not necessarily the case. Of course, we don't, we don't, we don't really know necessarily. Anyway, so this, this, um, and uh, the other thing that uh, so so m gamma is the quotient of Teich, you know, by some discrete group action, right? Which is a sub, uh, you know, which is um, subgroup of G, and um, basically, you know, basically speaking, you you know, m gamma is a moduli space of marked uh, complex structures, right? And uh, so the, the main difference between the Teichmuller space and then gamma is the, basically the automorphisms of the lattice, right? So you could, uh, you could have some uh, uh, diffeomorphisms of the manifold, which will act trivially on the cohomology lattice, right? So then uh, those guys would give you the same marking, but they would not necessarily give you the same point of Teichmuller space, right? So, okay. Um, so that's how it works. And we have the, the period map. We define the period map. Um, so this was moduli space of marked complex structures, right? Again, modulo some equivalence relation. Let me write that one like this. Just to just to differentiate between that and the other one. Um, so then, um, okay. And then we have the period map, right? So the period map we define the period map from M gamma, but we could compose it with the map to from types. And this went to the period domain, which I think I called that Q uh, Q gamma, right? This was a quadric, right? It's a, it was an, a real open submanifold of the of a complex quadric inside the projectivization of our lattice tensored with C. Okay, and this was our period map P gamma, right? Okay, and what we what we also saw was that uh, so this n gamma is not necessarily Hausdorff, but it is a complex manifold. So this map here is is again a local isomorphism. So both Teichmuller space and M gamma are, are, are complex manifolds, but neither of them is Hausdorff. So M gamma is a non-Hausdorff complex manifold. Q 
Q-gamma, on the other hand, is Hausdorff and simply connected. Okay. Um, so what? Um, so what? What do people do? So the the you know Verbitsky's clever idea. What was it? He said, "Well, okay, this guy is not Hausdorff. What am I going to do? What, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it Hausdorff." Okay. So we he you know he introduced what he called you know the uh, I don't know the Hausdorffization if you like I don't know I don't remember now exactly what what they call these things but um, so. You can you can sort of you can make a new um, uh, a new version of n gamma, which I will call m gamma s s for separated, right? And um, the period map will factor through this, right? This guy is here is the period map, and m gamma s is now Hausdorff. M, m gamma s is basically you know. M gamma modulo, uh, so you identify the points, um, the infinitely near points. Of M gamma and by that, what do I mean? So I mean that, so uh, a point P is infinitely near to Q if every neighborhood of P contains Q and vice versa. Okay, so, um, so you can you can construct a new space which is Hausdorff and the period map factors through it because Q gamma is Hausdorff, right? So then you have a new period map from this Hausdorffization, right? And and so now what do we have? This n gamma s now is a Hausdorff complex manifold. Okay. And we also know that the period map, we, we, we saw this before, this PS is a local isomorphism, right? The differentials are injected locally. All right, so then, so we would basically almost get a Torelli if we could show that the period map is surjective. So if we can show so that's 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 the theorem, if you like. That's the main part of the result of the of the proof of Torelli is that P S is surjective from any component from any connected component of M, M gamma S to, to Q gamma. So if I restrict it to any connected component, I get um, I get a surjective map. Now con combined with the fact that, that PS is a local isomorphism, you get as a corollary is that PS induces, in fact, an isomorphism. between components of, or maybe I should say isomorphisms, plural, induces isomorphisms between components of M gamma S and Q gamma, okay? All right, so that, that's modulo the surjectivity. And, and this uses, of course, that, that Q gamma is simply connected, right? And then that the map is et al. The PS is et al and Q gamma is simply connected. If you have something that's surjective, um, it's gonna be an isomorphism on, on every connected component, right? Um, okay, 
So now there was um, there was a question last time about you know what exactly is the difference between M gamma S and N gamma. So okay. So in other words. When do two um, when do two hypercalar manifolds give you infinitely near points of the moduli space of marked hypercalar manifolds, right? And um, so there's a almost a complete answer to that. Um, let me see if I can, I can move this thing down. All right. Okay, so um, so th this is mostly due to Heubrecht, right? Um, so first of all, um, there's the following result. So um, uh, if if I have two marked uh, complex structures, so X, C, and let's say um, X prime, oops, X prime, oh, there we go. C prime uh, are two infinitely, two infinitely linear points of um, M gamma, uh, then X and Y are bimeromorphic. And in fact, you can also say something a little bit more. You can also say something about the period point, right? And the period point of um, uh, x x c, which is also equal to the period point of x prime c prime, is contained in a particular type of hyperplane. Um, which is the the period domain Q gamma intersected with the perp of some element of the lattice. So remember the lattice is a, a free, a free um, finitely generated abelian group, right? So, um, so we, we take here the part with respect to the uh, quadratic form, right, on the lattice, and uh, we intersect uh, we intersect that part with Q gamma. So we get you know we get a hyperplane in, inside Q gamma, and you're saying that the uh, that these all of these non-separable points belong to hyperplanes of this type in the period domain, right? Okay, so this is one direction. And there's also a result again due to Heubrecht in the other direction, which tells you that which says the following. Uh, sorry. There's a question. Yes, yeah. go ahead, please. Uh, in, in the previous statement, what is Y? What is Y? Do I have a Y? Oh no, I meant I. I it's X prime. Sorry. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. It's not Y. Is that good? Now it's, now it's all good. Sorry? Now it's all good. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. So, um, so let's just one moment. Okay. 
Right. So the other, so the proposition which which kind of goes in the other direction, right? So um, we have the following, uh, which is again due to Hoybrush. Um, if if again. Uh, if now X and X prime are compact hyperkähler manifolds that are birational, right? So let, or bimeromorphic. So let X and X prime be compact hyperkähler and bimeromorphic uh, then, uh, basically, it tells you that they give you non-separated points of the uh, of the moduli of marked manifolds. So, so that that's the here's the result uh, precisely, right? So um, there exists uh, families families of complex manifolds. Compact hyperkähler manifolds um, so X to S and X prime to S. Um, actually, let me uh, no, instead of calling it S, maybe I should call it D for this, that would be better x to d and x prime to d over the same complex disk d uh, such that number one uh, well the the you know it's it's just a complex disk so it has an origin right so uh, x zero which is the fiber over zero is isomorphic to x uh, X prime zero is isomorphic to X prime. So these are the central fibers. And there exists a birational map, a bimeromorphic map, if you like. F from uh, X prime to X, which is of course, which of course commutes with the two projections to the disk which is an isomorphism over the disk minus zero and um, I didn't give the name uh, for the map between X and X prime. Okay. Uh, let me just rewrite that a little bit. Let okay. So let me. So I have a uh, a bimeromorphism that I will call here. Um, let me call this one little f, right? And then I will call this other one big f. Okay, so I have uh, I have a bimeromorphism between X and X prime, right? Then I'm saying that that bimeromorphism is basically induced from a bimeromorphism between two families over some disk, um, such that uh, well, that's it. So which is a nice homism over over the disk minus zero and induces F on X zero. Okay, so basically you're saying that big F restricted to X zero is equal to little f. Um, okay, so so it's 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 so what what is it telling you then? That it's pretty much telling you that uh, what you're doing when you pass from uh, when you pass from M gamma to M gamma S, uh, you are identifying pretty much the bimeromorphic uh, 
hypercalar manifolds. Okay. Um, but then, you know, the, the thing is that this, this, this um, the thing that's complicated here is the, this group of components. So we don't know, we don't know how many components this M gamma S has. So you were asking about this Namikawa example, right? Um, the Namikawa example is just, uh, you know, it's just, it's just with Kummers. So, you know, you, you just, you know, we introduced the, the Kummer, uh, the generalized Kummers for complex uh, tori of dimension two, right? So this is what you get here is that he, what, he, what he produces here is that he takes, he takes a complex torus and then he takes just its second Kummer, which is a fourfold. And then he takes the second Kummer of the dual torus. And then he shows that they are Hodge isometric. So they have the same H2 and that uh, with the same Hodge structure and the same quadratic form. But they, but you know, but 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 they don't necessarily have to be birational to each other. They don't necessarily have to be bimorphic. So it's it's a very simple example, and it's it's a little bit strange because um, you know you take a torus and it's dual. Normally, in, you know, a lot of the time, I mean, they're just going to belong to the same component of the moduli space of complex tori. So uh, so it, it it is you know understanding these. Um, these components uh, is not um, is not so easy, um, and uh, let me also uh, just quote another result of Hoibres, uh for this, which is uh, kind of nice. Oh, well, it is nice. It has not a nice nice results. So um, it's it's a finiteness result, right? So um, so. Because finiteness would be now interesting, right? So you can say, okay, you know that the bimeromorphic guys go to the same period point, but how many non-bimeromorphic guys will go to the same period point? And this is, uh, this is again, uh, uh, this this kind of tells you finitely many. Okay, so that, that that's nice. So anyway, So if we fix um, given um, given a uh, let me see how should I say this um, given a period point. Um, uh, let me call it, um, I don't know, little x in, in Q gamma. Um, so this is um, knowing already that the period map is surjective. Okay, so I'm gonna use the fact that, so let's say we already know, assume we already know that the period map is surjective. Subjective, subjectivity of the period map, right? Okay, um, so assume we already know that, then, then what do we get? We get the set of, um, the set of hyperkähler complex structures <clears throat> uh, with image, I should say marks, I guess, sorry. Um, yeah. With image, uh, No, actually that doesn't really follow here. Um, sorry, just one second, let me think for a second here. 
Does the marking change anything? Um, Okay, let me let me restrate this in a different way so that I'm I'm certain that it is correct. So So the set of hypercalar complex structures on, on our differentiable manifold X with a fixed arch structure on H2 of X Z is so then is uh, so non empty the non empty part as I said that's the surjectivity of the period map right and now this is the interesting part uh, consists of a finite number of um, bimeromorphic equivalence classes. Okay, so what you're saying here is that um, if you identify all the bimeromorphic guys, then you have only finitely many hypercalar complex structures with a fixed heart structure on the H2, right? So it is, it is a pretty strong result. Of course, unfortunately, there's no effective bounds on this finite number. Um, that would be, a, a, obviously, a, any kind of bound would be, would be very interesting, right? Um, all right. So, uh, okay, so we have this. Uh, are there any questions before I move on? I, what I would like to do is say a few words now about the surjectivity of this period map. Are there any questions before I move on to that? Uh, yes, I have a question for this uh -huh. proposition. Uh -huh. So do we need to fix a deformation type like we like we fix the connect component of the motorized space? Or is the finiteness uh, like says the, also the finiteness for the deformation types? Yes, you are fixing you are fixing the uh, the differentiable structure on M, right? That's what you're fixing. So you you're throughout all of this. Uh, we had we have a fixed uh, C infinity manifold, compact okay. C infinity manifold okay, I see. for all of this. Yeah, we are, we are fixing that. Yeah. So can I ask a question? Right. So so we are not anymore on the moduli space of marked uh, hypercalar manifolds, right? As we are talking one, about. No, for this one, no, we're not. No. So the marking, I mean, understanding how the marking, uh, that's a different thing that has to do with the lattice, right? So how many different markings can you have? I mean, then you're looking at the automorphisms of the lattice. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a separate question, yeah. And uh, it can be, it expressed in terms of uh, Teich-Muller uh, space, the, the statement, I mean. Oh, this statement here. Yes. In terms of the Teichmuller space. I mean, yes. well, um, well, you see the Teichmuller space could have many, many components. I mean, there are examples of, uh, so, okay. So the Teichmuller space sits above everything, right? So already these fibers here can be infinite. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. There are examples where it is infinite actually. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, sure. Okay, any other questions? 
Okay, very good. Um, thanks everyone. So, um, so now let's see. So now, as I said, I wanna say something about the surge activity uh, of the period map. This is Verbitsky's clever trick, clever trick, right? All right. Um, so what does it, um, it uses what, uh, what we call, what people normally call twister lines, uh, which actually Loyenha calls very much more aptly, he calls them twister conics, which I think is, is, makes a lot more sense. Um, these are actually, in fact, really conics. So, um, so there are two ways of uh, thinking about these. Um, and uh, let me let me start with the first way. So if you if let's go back to the to the period map, right? So we have this lattice gamma with with its quadratic form q gamma, right? And then we had this big q gamma, which was the period domain, right? Sits inside the actual quadric, which sits inside the projectivization of gamma, and so with c, right? This was our period domain. Now. For, for a hyperkähler manifold, uh, the signature of Q gamma after I tensor it with R, you know, after I extend the scalars to R is of the shape, you know, three, let me call that B2 minus three. I write it as B2, uh, where B2 here is the rank of gamma. Um, I write it as B2 because uh, usually it's going to be the second Betty number of a hyperkähler manifold, right? All right, so this is the signature. Uh, what this means is that uh, then you have, um, if you go into, uh, uh, you know, because the signature is, is three B2 minus three, after you tensor with R, you can have uh, three dimensional real positive planes, right? So, um, so each time, uh, sorry, um, yeah, okay, yeah, that's what we do. So um, we can choose, each time we choose, um, of a three-dimensional real plane, uh, inside, you know, gamma tensor R, um, positive for Q gamma uh, gives a twister conic. So the way you do it is you just, uh, let me give a name to this uh, positive plane, let me call it P a PR, if you like, and then I'll, I'll take, um, no, I don't want to call it PR, sorry. Um, let me call it something else. I don't know, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe I'll just call it PR. Well, the problem is I want to projectivize it, so hmm, what should I call it? Let me call it F. Okay. Let me call it FR, then what I can, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take FR, I'm going to tensor it with C, you know, then this will be inside gamma tensor with C, then I'm going to projectivize it. So I'm going to, to say, to say that P is the projectivization of this FR tensor with C. So this now is, is just a P2, right, inside P of gamma tensor with C. And now you can intersect it. So P intersected with Q gamma, this is by definition, uh, this is a twister conic. Okay. All right. And uh, you can show it's not it's not that difficult. Um, 
we can show that uh, Q gamma is what we call twister path connected. What that means is that any two points of Q gamma can be joined by a path, by a sequence, by a connected sequence, of course. of twisted conics. Okay. Um, and this is this is you know this is very elementary. Uh, you can find a proof in uh, Holy Brest Bubaki seminar, seminar talk. Um, so so no, yeah you have this and uh, but then the uh, the the trick is that uh, you can you can produce these twister conics in a different way. And that's, that has to do with twister families. So that's the next thing that I would like to, uh, to explain. Twister spaces. So let's go back again. So let's say that suppose that X is hypercalar. So G is now my hypercalar metric. And um, All right. Then, there, then, then we know that um, we know that there is an S two of of Kähler complex structures on X, right? We already saw that there exists I J K Kähler complex structures. Kähler with respect to G, of course. Right, and then this gives us a whole S two of Kähler complex structures, right? So for any A B C in S two in the in the unit sphere in R three, right? A lambda equal to A I plus B J plus C K is also a Kähler complex structure. On X two, right? Okay. So now we're going to define the uh, oh and 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 re recall also the Kähler form. So recall that the Kähler form associated to lambda well let's call that omega sub lambda and. Uh, you know, we define omega via its action on a pair of vector fields, right? So those are my two dots, my two vector fields. And, and the way that it acts on vector fields is by taking G of lambda acting on the first vector field and then putting in the second vector field, right? So, so this gives us, um, <clears throat> so this is the Kähler form, right? For each of these complex structures. And we have a family. Um, of these X lambdas, right? Of compact Kähler manifolds. All right. And so with this, uh, we can define the twister space, right? So definition.
the twister space. Um, and let me call that, I don't know what am I gonna call it. Um, I can call it um hmm. yeah i'm not sure <laughs> because i've used so many uh, all of these things well okay let me just call it curly x like i always do it's not exactly the same as the previous deformations that we had but um curly x it, it maps to p1 um of xg so the twister space is specifically associated to our given hyperkähler manifold right is uh so as a differentiable manifold it's just a product so x times p1 but um so as a c infinity manifold with and, but it has a particular complex structure. Oh, what happened there? Okay, there we go. With the complex structure Actually, it's really it's really an almost complex structure, right? Meaning that it's only defined on the tangent space with the almost complex structure. Uh, I x times p1. So I'm going to define this on the tangent spaces. So the tangent space to the product is the direct sum of the tangent spaces to the two factors. And I will say what linear operator I have here as my almost complex structure. So it sends a pair of vectors to, of course, on one factor on X, we, we want the complex structure lambda. That's what that one's gonna be. And then on the other side, we're just gonna put the complex structure of P1. All right, so it's the most natural thing that you could come up with. And this is integrable, meaning it comes from a real, from an actual complex structure by a result of Hitchin, uh, Carl Heed, Lindstrom, and Rosek. Okay, so um, all right. So you have this. Uh, you have this. Uh, fa this this product structure. You put on every fiber. You, so you see that the the complex structure of the fibers is moving, right? So what you have here then is just uh, it's just, uh, you know, you have your X over P1, right? The complex structure. And for each, each time you take a point of this P1, which we think of also as S2, right? So each time you take a Lambda here, the fiber over Lambda it has complex structure Lambda. Okay, so it's a, it's a very nice, simple notion. And then you can, you can map this via with the period map because um, uh, P1 is simply connected. You can just, you can just put a marking, uh, you know, the, because P1 is simply connected, you can trivialize the, um, the H2s along the fibers, right? You can identify H2 of all the fibers with the H2 on one fixed fiber, right? So it has a, you know, you can just define markings, right? You can choose markings. Uh, consistently on all the fibers, right? And we can choose consistent markings. On all the fibers to get the period map P from P1 to the period domain Q gamma, which sends lambda to the point uh, sigma x lambda. 
remember sigma is um, a generator of H two zero, right? So where sigma x lambda is a generator of H two zero of x lambda, which is equal to H zero or omega two of x lambda. All right. Okay, so you get a you get a period map, and then you can you look at it. You can look at the image of the P one under the period map, and then you have a little lemma, which I'm not sure who this is due to. Uh, I suppose I mean you know once you knew that this was a holomorphic family, you know then probably I mean I suppose Hitchin, Carl, Hitt, Lindstrom, and Rosek could have done this right, or maybe somebody else did it before. I'm not sure. Um, so the the lemma says that the image. of uh, or the image p of uh, p1 is a twister conic okay all right so this is now basically what gives you the surjectivity of the period map because um, so the cor corollary is corollary of this and the twister path connectivity is that the period map from M gamma to Q gamma is surjective on any connected component. of n gamma, okay? And you see here, uh, I'm saying on any connected component, because if you look at your family, uh, you can take any marking or of any fiber and extend that to a marking, to markings of the whole family, right? So you can, uh, so this, this, this just, uh, this works perfectly fine. That's why you get, you get your surge activity. So what you do is that you know that there are, um, you know, the map, the period map is a local isomorphism, right? So you just take a, an interior point of Q gamma, which is in the image of the period map, right? And then if you have a point which is uh, anywhere else in Q gamma, you just connect that point to a point in, the, in your interior ball, right, via a chain of twister conics. And then you know that all of those twister conics are images of twister spaces via the period map, right? So then that will give you their surjectivity. Uh, did I? Elham, remember oh, you- too long? Sorry. Well, yeah. y yes, but you can take the break now maybe or- Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I will, I will take the break now, yes. Was there a question or no? Okay, so, so we will stop uh, now for- a... So I, I missed just one, like the uh -huh, last two sure. lines of the previous uh, slide. Previous slide, this one? Uh, the, yes, to get uh, exactly that. Yeah, okay. I can I can make the slides available if uh, people wish. Uh, maybe I should have actually done it sooner. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I could have. Um, maybe I will. Um, can I email the slides to someone? Uh, you could, uh, if you wish, you could post them on the on the website. Yes, of course you can. You can. Uh, well, you can email them to me if you want, but also you can just email them to any of the secretaries uh, and they will post them, so. Okay, uh, I'm not sure who that would be. The, the, the usual address, let me just give it to you. The... Oh, okay, all right, thanks. So, here. This is the official uh, email address of the school. So then. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I'll, I'll or do. if you prefer, just email them to me and then I'll. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I can. Uh, that, that's fine. I can, I can send it to that email address. So SMR3609. All right. Uh, okay. So we'll stop now for five minutes until 11 o'clock.